Hey guys, I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about this exercise, the barbell hip thrust video that a client of mine had sent to me and asked me to do a commentary on. So I wanted to do one for you as well because all of the points that I brought up to her while commentating this video are the same exact points that I've had to address with 99% of the people that do the exercise. So I'm going to let it rip for a second. And we'll take a look and we'll get into it okay so typical barbell hip thrust with typical adjustments abound okay so there's probably one or two things that pop out to just about anybody watching this video but I wanted to bring a few up maybe that perhaps we haven't considered. One in particular is we always, regardless of the exercise, want to keep a neutral spine. And here we see that the cervical spine is not neutral. This happens a lot. I mean, we've got our chin up, we want to take a look and see what's going on with the movement. But it's absolutely critical that not only do you use a bench to support the shoulders, but we also use a bench to support the neck as well. This isn't neutral, that can cause problems down the road. It also leads to overactivity within certain muscles in the neck and the shoulders, and those are all things that we want to avoid. Okay, so the first thing is neutral spine, always and forever. Secondly, looking at just the setup of it, we can see here that it appears as though her heels are slightly out of alignment and her right toe seems pointed out just a little bit farther than the left. What is set up properly here, just about, is that the knee is directly over the heel. And that's exactly how you want to set up for this movement, is in a position where the shoulders are resting on the bench, the head is resting on the bench, and the knee is situated directly over the heel. Because when you drive those glutes, and you lift that bar up off the ground, equal and opposite, you want to resist gravity parallel and in direct opposition with the direction that gravity is pulling, which is vertical. And that's going to be done right here. Any other configuration of this is going to change the stresses on the knee, the hip, and the ankle, and just be a rather inefficient way at performing the exercise, wasting a lot of energy doing stuff that you don't need to be doing. Okay, and something else that we see is the ballistic nature of her movement and her execution of these reps which we really want to avoid, and I'll tell you why. There's a few reasons. One is as that bar, if you're generating so much force that this bar leaves your lap momentarily, then as it descends and your lap catches it, there's a certain amount of stress that you're either prepared or unprepared for, your spine, your back, your shoulders, your hips, your knees, and everything else, that doesn't need to be there. We want to move that weight slow and controlled. Unless we're practicing for a functional power movement, and this is going to be part of the program, but otherwise, 99% of the time, you want to move it slow. You want that weight to just naturally decelerate and stop at the top, and then slow and under control, allow those glutes to lengthen as you lower the weight, and then, again, push the weight up towards the ceiling. So what I want to recommend is if you do do this exercise or you're interested in doing this exercise begin to do it without any weight at all take the bar completely off your lap and once you're set up in proper form and you've got your head resting on the bench the shoulders resting on the bench knee directly over the heel and both feet pointing in the same direction what I want you to do here at the bottom of the movement before you even begin I want you to squeeze your butt cheeks and pinch them together keeping those cheeks squeezed really as hard as you can I now want you to begin to raise your hips away from the floor and into the fully locked out position naturally those cheeks are going to be squeezed because they've been since the very beginning of that movement and then I want you to lower your hips slowly towards the ground keeping your cheeks squeezed as much as you can while letting your hips drop to the floor so your glutes are naturally going to have to relax a little bit in order to allow for those hips to flex. But you want to make sure that you've got all the tension in those glutes and that governing the amount of tension in those glutes will determine if that bar is going to raise up off the floor 
or if you're going to allow that bar to descend slowly and under control. It's all in the hips. It's all in the glutes. This is technically a hip hinge. It's a supine hip hinge, but nonetheless, you're still hinging at the hips. So being able to focus on those glutes as the primary driver of this movement and you're able to do it with control and without trying to blast that bar up off of the ground so that it bounces at the top will allow you to translate that very same contraction, that very same governance of the hip and the lower back joints in every other hip hinge exercise, whether it's one of the variety of deadlifts, whether it's a squat, whether it's some kettlebell work that you're doing, any of it. But when you think hip hinge, I want you to think glutes. And when you think glutes, I want you to think slow, forceful, powerful contraction. All right, give that a shot in your program. If you already do it, that's how I want you to do your hip thrusts from now on, your glute bridges from now on. If you don't do it and you're interested in doing it, that's how I want you to do the glute bridges from day one. Good luck.